I have some exciting news for you. I've been working hard to create something just for you, and it's officially live. It's a free quiz to help you determine your personal path to creating a successful digital course. That means by taking just two minutes to complete this quiz, you'll discover my three proven approaches for creating a profitable digital course, and you'll find out which one you should take based on your experience, expertise, and where you're at as an entrepreneur. Not only will you find out what path is best for you, I'll even give you a step-by-step framework for bringing your digital course to life. So head on over to amyporterfield.com forward slash quiz right now to find out your next steps to creating a profitable business that you love. I mean it. Go take the quiz right now. Don't wait one more second. amyporterfield.com forward slash quiz. Your future business and digital course is waiting for you to take this first step. I cannot wait to see what you create. So amyporterfield.com forward slash quiz to get started creating your stellar and profitable digital course. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Hi there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. In this episode, we are going to be talking about getting clarity around what specifically you are known for in your business. And this is important for you as the content creator, as the owner of the business, to get really clear with yourself about how you add value and specifically what you do in order to help people get results. But it's also equally important that your audience can talk about you to other people. Word of mouth marketing is alive and well, and it's important that your audience can specifically say, oh yeah, she does this. And so we're going to explore both angles today on the podcast. The reason why this topic is top of mind is because I'm currently updating my list building course. I'm adding new trainings to the course and I'm revamping it a bit. So all of you who are already a member of my list building program, you're going to get the updates when they go live. And if you're not already a member, I'll let you know soon when these new trainings have been added and you can join and get all of it and dive into getting started with your list building right away. So today's episode is a little taste of what I've been working on inside of the new list building course, because when you get specific about what you're known for and you get clarity around that, then you get even better at speaking to your ideal customer avatar. When you get really good with speaking to your ideal customer avatar, it becomes a whole lot easier to list build. You see how that all works together? So we want to start with making sure that you as the business owner and your audience can really say what specifically you are known for. So that's what we're going to do today. Again, if you like this episode and want to drill down even deeper with me, you can do so in my list building course. This specific training with a lot more layers will be included very soon. I'll keep you updated when it's been added. Good? Okay, so here we go. Let me ask you a question. If I were to ask two people in your audience the question, what exactly does she do? She being you, so she or he. So let's pretend your name is Jane. And I asked your two audience members, what does Jane do? And one of the audience members had just started following you over the last few months. So they just started listening to your podcast and watching your Facebook lives and watching you on Instagram stories. They just started. And then the other person has been following you for years now. Would those two people give the same answer if I said, what does she do exactly? Would the newbie follower have a different answer than let's say somebody that's been following you for years. Here's what I'm getting at. Are you being incredibly clear on what you're known for? Meaning you as the marketer, do you know yourself what you are known for? And if you are very clear with yourself, do you think your audience is incredibly clear? No matter if they're a newbie audience member, if they've been with you for a while, could they look to their friend and say, oh yeah, here's what she's all about. Here's what she teaches. Here's what you'll learn from her. 
And if you're not so sure, then I'm glad you're tuning into this episode because here's why this is important. Two reasons. Number one, our most loyal followers will also be our biggest referrers. If you're adding value to their lives, they'll tell other people about you. You want to make it easy for them to talk about you. And number two, if you want people to see you as their go-to guide for XYZ, then you've got to be clear on what that XYZ is all about, right? So for example, I'm known for my step-by-step instruction on list building, course creation, and webinars. So when someone in my audience thinks, I really want to build my email list or I really want to create a digital course. I know that I have a whole tribe of people out there that will say, oh, you've got to check out Amy Porterfield. That's what she's known for. Now, how does my audience know this? Because those are the topics I talk about the most on this podcast, on social media, and from stage. Those are the topics I create courses around. And that's what you'll see right away when you visit my website. Yes, in the broader sense, I'm known for teaching online marketing strategies, but when my audience is in my sphere for any amount of time, they'll know exactly how I'm providing value. They'll know the specifics around the big general idea of teaching online marketing strategies. Again, they'll know list building courses and webinars. Now, I want to put a little bug in your ear right now because about eight years ago, I was best known for Facebook marketing. And over the years, I've slowly made a transition. Why? Because I became more laser focused and I began to grow my success around doing courses and doing webinars. My expertise expanded, my experiences expanded, and I really honed in on list building, course creation, and webinars. So this is something you can move into and you can always make a pivot over time. As long as you're not chasing the next shiny object and saying, oh, this is what I want to do now. That's what I want to do. Or no, no, that's what I want to do. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying right now you could establish yourself as being known for something and years down the road that might change and that's okay. Be open to that. We're just focused on the here and now, what is real for you right now, and stay open to what might happen down the road. Good? Okay. So back to you. What are you known for? Pause this podcast just for a minute and say it out loud. Can you say it in a succinct way, maybe in just two or three sentences? What are you most known for? Okay, so let's pretend you just paused, or let's just say you said it out loud. If you're driving, no one's around, just say it out loud. And here's a few things. Number one, if you stumbled or rambled a bit, know that you're not alone. Many of us get caught in the, I want to be known for this and for that and for this, and I don't want to leave anybody out. That is very normal. Another problem is when you become known for something that is really good, yet vague, it's hard to get out of that. So if you found yourself saying, I'm known for encouraging my audience, or I'm known for helping my audience feel like they can do something, but you're not necessarily a motivational coach, like there's other strategies you want to teach, then I think you're getting lost a little bit in the mindset versus the tactical or strategic aspects of what you do. Because in many ways, I am known for list building, course creation, and webinars. But if you've been in any one of my courses, and if you've listened to my podcast for any amount of time, you know that I'm also your coach in general. I'm going to tell you to get yourself up, pick yourself up when you mess up and keep going. I'm going to encourage you to change your mindset and your beliefs. I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader. I'm going to give you tough love. So the motivation and inspiration I think should be in all of our businesses. So now I'm saying beyond the motivation and inspiration, what are the strategic aspects, the methods, the formulas that you are known for? Yeah, it takes things up a notch, right? 
Don't worry. If you get stuck in this episode, again, I'm creating an entire lesson around this inside of my list building course that's coming out soon. So you can definitely dive in deeper, but just stay with me here because I think I could make this very actionable for you right now. So at the end of this episode, you know what your marching orders are. Good? Okay. So the success of your business hinges on your clarity around this question and your ability to communicate that clearly to your ideal audience. I'm going to give you some clear next steps to figure this out. If you've not nailed it down yet, and some ways to fine tune and develop what you've already declared as the thing you're known for. So there's something for everyone here. You might be somewhat clear or think you've got it. Let's just see if we can fine tune. Or if you're really confused or if you think your audience is confused, then we're going to just tighten that up and get some major clarity around that. Good. First, a listener shout out. This one is for Jay Barship, who left me this review in iTunes. Amy and her guests give listeners an unfair advantage when it comes to creating the business and life of their dreams. Highly recommend listening and subscribing to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast if you want to stay ahead of the curve and effectively grow your business without breaking the bank. Um, Jay Barshop, I don't really think I could have asked for a better testimonial for this podcast. I definitely want to be known for giving people that unfair advantage. So thank you so very much. What a great thing to hear. So I appreciate you taking the time and sharing that. Okay. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's get into the specifics of getting clear around what you are specifically known for in your business. Okay, to kick things off, I wanted to share two examples of students of mine that are specifically known for something in their business. Now, both of them are life coaches, and both of them teach people how to lose weight. But here's where the specificity plays a part. First up is Katrina Ubel, and she is a life coach, but she is specifically known for helping busy female physicians lose weight. That is what she's known for. If you are a busy female physician and you are struggling with your weight and you go to Katrina to help you and you get success, if you're around another busy physician that says, I'm really struggling with weight loss, you're going to say, oh, you need to go to Katrina. She specializes in helping women like us lose weight. See the power of something like that? Now, my other example is my own weight loss coach, Corinne Crabtree. Now, Corinne specializes in helping women who need to lose 100 pounds or more. Now, I want to be very clear. She helps women who don't need to lose 100 pounds. So let's say you need to lose 60 pounds. Corinne can still help you inside of her P&P tribe where she has a membership site and that's where she teaches how to lose the weight. But she is known for helping women who need to lose 100 pounds or more. It's her ability to carve her space in this life coaching weight loss sphere and say, this is what I've done for myself, what I've done for many of my students and what I can do for you. And just because you're known for a specific thing doesn't mean that people won't find you and want to work with you outside of that perimeter just a bit, but there's still power in being known for a specific thing. I'm telling you, I've said it before in many of the episodes, but the riches are in the niches. And here's two perfect examples. Both of these women are crushing it. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to add one more life coach, and that is Brooke Castillo. Now, Brooke Castillo, she is a life coach, but she also is known for teaching other life coaches how to become a life coach. So she certifies them and then teaches them how to grow their business. So Brooke Castillo is just not known for being a life coach, but she helps certify life coaches and helps them grow their business online. So all of these women have carved their space out in their niche. And I think that's the thing I really want you to hear, but here's something extra special. Each of them has their own formula or their own methods for how they do it. And they're also known for that. So let me give you two examples. Corinne is known for her four basics of weight loss. I'm not going to give them away here because it's her content, not mine, but she always talks about these four basics. It's exactly where you start. You start with the four basics of weight loss. And in a lot of her Facebook lives, in her free 
course about the four basics, that's her lead magnet, she drills down into all of them. So she gives the formula away for free, but she is known for those four basics. And that's where she starts with their audience because she knows that's where they need to start. We start out simple. Now, Brooke Castillo, she is known for the self-coaching model. The self-coaching model is basically this method that she teaches in terms of how to process your emotions. And it's this idea that you start with the circumstance. The circumstance creates a thought. The thought creates a feeling. The feeling creates an action and the action creates a result. So that's her self-coaching model that she talks about on her podcast, inside of her programs, in her self-coaching scholars program. I mean, she's got it everywhere. And I love this idea of having a method or a strategy or framework that you are known for, and you always go back to it. So you might teach it for free, let's say on a podcast episode, and that becomes one podcast episode that you send all newbies to. Whenever you meet somebody, whenever you're talking to someone online, you'll always say, go listen to that podcast episode. Or Karim will say, go sign up for my free weight loss course. You'll get it on my website. Like there's always somewhere you can send someone back to if you've got a framework and that's where you start everybody with that framework. So it's really powerful. That could be literally a podcast for another day, but being known for something is one thing, but having some kind of method or strategy or framework to solidify that, it really makes it even stronger. So I just wanted to put that out there. I wanted to give you three examples of life coaches that are specifically known for something and they actually have framework behind it. Something to think about, right? If we ended this podcast right now, right this minute, I think you would have gotten something that you can take action with. You can start to think about your framework or what are your basics that you would teach or what is your model? It's really, really valuable. Just something to think about. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to get into the five specific ways that you can make sure you're clear on what you're known for. You personally are clear and your audience is clear as well. So hopefully by the end of the five steps that I walk you through, you will have a sense of, okay, I know what I need to do. I know where I need to tighten things up. And maybe even you've got some ideas for that framework or strategy or method or model that you would like to create as well. All right. Are we ready? Okay. Number one, where do people start with you? When you think about your ideal customer avatar, where are they at the beginning of the journey with you? And so this is an important question that I don't think we ask enough. So if you were to meet somebody brand new to your community and you ask them, where are you on your journey right now? What would they likely tell you? Now, I understand that sometimes we attract people that are at all these different places in their journey, but let's just take that low hanging fruit. The majority of people that come into your world Where are they right now? And if you get clear, if you try to answer that question, if you don't know, answer it to the best of your ability. What if you did know? Where likely are they? That is a really great place to create a lead magnet. That is a really great place to start the conversation. If you get clear on where they are when they first come into your world, you can create content like blog posts and podcast episodes around that. And you can, again, create a lead magnet that grabs their attention right where they are right now. Now, how does this help you to really hone in what you're known for? Well, if you start the conversation in the right place, you can then lead this new subscriber or this new audience member of yours down a path to dive deeper into your content where you can then start getting very specific about what you teach. So for me, a lot of the times my audience is definitely at the very beginning stage of list building. And so I don't typically start the conversation at creating courses or doing webinars. So you will see a lot of my content on my podcast and a lot of the stuff I talk about on Facebook Lives 
typically, unless I'm in a promotion about courses and webinars, typically starts around the list building and then getting clarity around what you're known for and getting clear around your ICA. The conversations I have typically are where my audience is starting. So this will help you hone in on the beginning part of what you're known for and where you want to take people. So get clear on where your audience is starting with you, create content, create a freebie around that. And when you come in contact with someone brand new to your world, that's where you start them. Okay. Number two, talk about what you're known for a lot. This is something I've gotten really good at over the last few years, but really didn't know how to do this in the beginning. Once I realized, okay, I am going to be known for list building, course creation, and webinars. And notice all three of those things are totally aligned, right? I'm not saying I'm going to be known for fitness and list building and style and fashion. Like you did notice that those three that I say are very much aligned, right? Just important, just a little caveat there. But once you get comfortable with what you're known for, I want you to talk about it a lot. And so you're going to weave in those topics into everything that you do. And you're also going to always come back to it. So practice talking about what you're known for and also be diligent about taking the opportunities to talk about what you're known for. Let me give you a really, really important piece of advice that I did not do well in my early years of growing a business. Quite honestly, probably the first six years, I did not do well with this. You can do well starting now. So you do not need to make this mistake I made. And that is when people would ask me to speak on their stage, I would literally say to them, what do you want me to talk about? And then they would tell me and I would do it. Now, here's where that got to be very dicey. When I was moving into list building, course creation, and webinars, I was still very much known for Facebook marketing, but I did not want to teach it anymore. I knew that I would no longer have courses about Facebook marketing specifically. I knew that that was not an area I was going into. The book I had co-written, Facebook Marketing All-in-One for Dummies, it was um, older now. So they, I actually took myself out of it and they have new people writing it. So that wasn't part of my world anymore. I was moving away from it, but I was still known for Facebook marketing. So people would ask me to go on stage and speak about it. And I would, and it would frustrate me and I didn't enjoy it. And it was a mixed message. So now, and I wish I did this so long ago, when someone asks me to speak on stage, I will only talk about my area of expertise, the things I am known for. And I will only talk to an audience that would be a very good fit for the courses that I sell. I know when you get asked to speak on stage that it's exciting and you think you have access to a a huge audience and it looks good for you and ego gets tied into speaking on stage. I've seen it a lot. But if those people in the audience are not your people, if they likely will never buy from you, do not speak on that stage. I really do believe this. You'll get other opportunities. You can practice in different ways. But I've spoken on many stages where the people in the audience are such a terrible fit, and it's a bad experience and a waste of time. So I know other marketers might say, just say yes to everything to get the experience. I think there's other ways to get the experience. So You make sure that when you get speaking opportunities, you're speaking about what you are known for. You guide that conversation. You'll do a better job and you'll find buyers in that audience as well, or at least people that want to start the journey with you at the very beginning. Okay. Number three, stick with it. Now, my multi-passionate entrepreneurs, tune in here. If you're multitasking, come back to me. This is important. I know that some of you are multi-passionate. And I'm not saying that you can't get excited about different things that you're working on and you can't expand and go beyond what you're known for. But if you want a little tough love from someone you trust, hopefully you trust me, then just know that if you are constantly dabbling in a bunch of things, you will never be known for something specific. And I have a friend out there that she does a lot of things in her business, and this is no lie. Just two days ago, somebody who didn't know her asked me, what does she do? And I started to talk and I started to rattle on and I started to sound like an idiot. I I wasn't sure. And then I thought, this is making no sense. 
And then I thought, I wonder what she would say she's known for, because I literally cannot put it in a short paragraph even. It's because she dabbles with a lot of different areas of expertise. And so I don't think that serves anybody. And so you can be passionate about a lot of things, but when it comes to your business, narrow it down just a little. I really hope you hear me here. It doesn't need to put you into a box. It actually will allow you to transform lives at a whole different level if they know why they're coming to you in the first place. Number four, don't be afraid to ask people to share with you what they think you're all about. So this part I love, why not go to two or three of your customers or two or three of your raving fans and say, will you do a little favor for me? Will you tell me in two or three sentences what I'm best known for? I think it's going to be very eye-opening, very eye-opening for you. And you'll probably get a mix of the mindset, inspiration, motivation, as well as the strategies. But if all three people come back to you and there's no specific strategy in there, if there's no specific framework or method or topic, then you got some work to do for sure. So that actually leads me to the fifth. And the the fifth tip I have for you is what I already said, and I've already hinted at it, and I don't think I hinted. I actually encourage you to do so. Consider putting together a framework, a method, the basics like Corinne has, or a blueprint, or something that you can start the conversation with and you can go back to it. It's like the foundation. Now, you're not going to think of this overnight, and you might need to play with a few different things. And I bet when Corinne, I don't know, I'm making this up, but I bet when Corinne created the four basics, she didn't create the four basics and say, this is it. This is the framework. This is what I'm going to come back to. This is what everything is about. Now, forgive me, Corinne, if you're listening, you might have, but I'm going to guess that that is something that evolves over time. And as you see people really gravitating toward it and really responding well to it, you're like, ding, ding, ding. That's my thing. This is working. This is really working. You might have three or four different models or frameworks or big ideas out there. And there's going to be one that your audience will really gravitate toward. That's it. Grab it and then make it better. Refine it. I think this really, really helps. Now, to be quite honest, I have a lot of frameworks inside my paid courses. So I already have done a lot of this. I have the profitable webinar framework. I have the price perfection framework, how to price a course, how to put together a webinar. I've got a few inside of my courses that I talk about a lot and go back to, but I'm going to really start to think about how could I create one for free? Where would I start the conversation in terms of a framework, a model, a blueprint, a method that is free? I love this idea, and it's something that I'm going to expand on and and move from beyond just having those in my, my paid courses to something that might be free. It's a really cool way to just always tie it back to, here's where you need to go to get started. Here's where you need to go to get started. I I love this idea and I hope that you do too. So I want you to at least play with it, at least consider what it might look like in your business. All right. So a quick run through number one, where do people start with you? Get clear on that. Number two, talk about what you do a lot in a lot of different ways. Don't be shy about it. Put a stake in the ground. Number three, stick with it. So remember, you don't always have to be known for this one thing or a few things like me. It might change over time, but right now, where you are at, where your expertise are, what is it? Like really think about it. What is it? And then stick with it and expand it. Content creation is a whole lot easier when you know what you're known for. So if you're struggling with coming up with ideas to creating content, Get clear on what you're known for, and you'll probably think of 20 ideas around that one thing you're known for. Number four, don't be afraid to ask people what they think you're known for. This could be really eye-opening. And number five, think about this idea of a framework, blueprint, a method. What might that look like for people just coming into your world? 
All right. So there you have it. I hope you found immense value in this episode, especially because when people can talk about you and say, you've got to go check her out. This is what she will help you with. You're going to get that word of mouth magic, that power that is incredibly important for online businesses. All of the funnels and social media and emails and live videos and all of that, it matters and you need to be doing it. However, what I think is most powerful is when someone loves what I do, they got value from me, they got results from my methods and blueprints and trainings, and they look at their peer and say, I know exactly what you need, and her name is Amy Porterfield. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than that, right? I live by recommendations. I love when my peers tell me who to go to and why I need to learn from them. And that's what we're talking about today. That's why all of this is so incredibly important. All right. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm so honored that you were here with me today, and I can't wait to do it again. Same time, same place. See you next week.